Welcome to the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. My name is Natalie Nidham. I'm a nutritionist, a human potential, and epigenetic coach, and I created this podcast to bring you the latest ways to take control of your health and longevity. We cover it all, from new technology to ancestral health practices, personalized interventions, and a very special interest of mine, peptides. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. Have you ever wondered what the deal is with all these NAD supplements? Should you be forking out $500 and hooking yourself up to an IV, feeling a little bit sick for about four or five hours just so you could have better energy for a few days? Or... Could you avoid that nasty business and just use an NAD lozenge and let it dissolve into your tongue? Or should you be using a precursor to NAD, something like NR or NMN? I can tell you that in my Biohacking Superhuman Performance Group on Facebook and on MeWe, people are constantly debating what form of NAD they should be using Or should they be using precursors? Is the whole thing a waste of money? And for those of you who may be sitting there scratching your heads wondering, what the heck is she talking about? Why do I even care about this? Well, that's because NAD is one of the most important compounds to your body to make cellular energy. And if your cells don't have energy, nothing good happens in the human body. We become depleted of NAD as we age, or if we're chronically ill, or if we're very, very stressed, or also other people whose need for NAD goes up dramatically can be people with mental health issues, like things like even like schizophrenia, people who suffer from addiction, all these populations of people, these are people that NAD could help dramatically. And our guests today are one person who has had 14 years of experience with NAD infusions. So this, her name is Jean Petre. She is a nurse, she's a naturopath, and she's She is a total expert when it comes to NAD infusions. So Jean is going to be able to answer a lot of these questions for us from a clinical perspective. And her business partner, Tom Angolia, is actually a business guy. And so why is the business guy on the podcast? Well, the business guy is on the podcast because this dude's been through the mill and he is a walking testimonial to what NAD can do. He credits this compound with literally saving his life. I'm going to let him tell his own story, but I'm here to tell you that what NAD did for him is dramatic and it really transformed his life. He went from a very successful business guy to a guy who hosts conferences on NAD, who goes to NAD conferences and rubs elbows with some of the leading researchers and scientists looking into this compound. Uh, Tom's a really interesting guy. And he and John decided this year, or actually last year, by the time you're listening to it, in January of 2020, they decided to join forces and to form a new organization with very lofty goals. So this organization is multifaceted. One arm of it is an e-commerce store. And some of you guys listening to this are going to love this. If you go to longevitycollective.com, you will be able to buy NAD sublingual lozenges. So these are lozenges under the tongue. But also, you will be able to buy NAD patches. So these are patches that deliver high doses of NAD through the skin. So you don't have to go for an IV. You don't have to poke yourself with a needle. It's a very efficient way of delivering quite high doses of NAD. So that's one website that they have. And if you go to Longevity Collective and you want to shop, I have a promo code for you. It's Longevity1515. And that will give you 15% discount off of your purchase. So that's a pretty good deal. But In addition to that, uh, while you're on this website, I invite you to poke around a little bit because John and Tom are about much more than selling you the latest NAD products. They have some lofty, lofty goals for this year and for the coming years. And after talking to them, I'm quite confident that they're going to get these done. So they also started a not-for-profit called Longevity Underground. And the aim of this not-for-profit is 
to make NAD treatments available to the people who need it the most, who are often the people who are the least able to afford it. So they want to make these products available to homeless people, to people with addiction issues, uh, to elderly people who very often are on a fixed income and yet could desperately use NAD to improve their quality of life. There's very little that this compound can't possibly do for people. So as Jean likes to say, she'd like to hire a crop plane and just dust the whole world with NAD. That's Longevity Underground. Then there's Longevity Diagnostic Research. And Longevity Diagnostic Research is another initiative that you'll find on this website. And this is all about developing a test that can help people to understand what their NAD levels are and what would be the best way to top up their NAD levels. So is it with with the precursors like NR or NMN? Would it be by using intranasal NAD or IV or transdermal or sub-Q? Like there's many different ways to administer NAD. And uh, Jean and Tom talk at various points in the podcast about what different conditions might require when you might use one over the other. So get your pens and papers out, people. You're going to probably want to take some notes. You're going to probably want to take set a little bit of time aside for this one. It's pretty in-depth. We go on for quite a while, but hopefully uh, you will get a lot of value out of the time that you invest here. As always, please know that this is not intended for medical advice. We're not diagnosing anything. We're not treating anything. Before you start using these products or doing anything else of the sort, please make sure that you contact your primary care physician and clear it with them to make sure that it's safe and right for you. Next, if you enjoy this podcast, please make sure that you leave us a review on whatever platform you're uh, listening to it on. If you want to connect with me directly, then you can reach me on my website at natnidham.com or through either of the biohacking superhuman performance groups on Facebook or on MeWe. And to reach Jean and Tom, you can do that through longevitycollective.com. So that's their website. They're both pretty available. And especially because with Longevity Underground, they're always looking for help with that project. If you're interested in getting involved with that, then they definitely want to hear from you. So once again, that promo code for you is longevity1515. And And I want to thank you so much for being here. And I hope that you enjoy this episode. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome, John and Tom, to the podcast. How are you tonight? I am well. How are you? I'm great. Okay, we're going to have to take turns. I'm not used to doing podcasts with two people. It's a good thing your third didn't show up. That would have been a total (laughs) mess for me. So, so tonight we have, and John, I can't remember. Oh, John Petrie. I don't know how to spell how to pronounce your last name. Mm Petrie. So Jean Petrie and Tom Ngoglia and which I probably butchered your last name too, Tom. It's it's Sicilian. So it's Ngoglia. Ngoglia. Got it. Okay. Okay. Tom and Jean are in one of the most fascinating areas of regenerative medicine these I I guess it's regenerative medicine right or complementary medicine maybe preventative I don't know what it what we want to call this area but basically tonight we're talking all about NAD you guys have a company that has many different facets to it why don't you one of you pick because I think we're going to start by explaining your organization what you guys do and then Tom I know that you have like some crazy story about how you got into this, which I'd love to hear because <laughs> I don't know it. Okay. Decide and amongst yourselves. I'm going to try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to elevate uh, and give Jean a chance because I've done a bunch of podcasts. Um, and so this, what makes this podcast so great is, you know, Jean has, what's amazing about her is she's, she's done thousands and thousands of infusions. She's worked with so many clients, some of the toughest toughest clients out there in terms of addiction, dual diagnosis, psychological disorders, from eating disorders to you know, borderline, things like that. She's she's done an amazing job. She's she's worked at Springfield, which was the clinic that brought NAD back to the United States. She's had her own clinic and her own successful practice. I've seen it. It's been amazing. She's taken part in, in published research. She's known by people in the NAD infusion community as the best infusion nurse or in terms of NAD infusions. 
um, as well as she has an education in naturopathy. naturopathy. I mean, it, it, in terms of being able to ask her about questions not having to do with NAD and having to do with holistic healing, I go to her with my issues and she, she's always there to, to troubleshoot them. And she's just, a, she's amazing to work with too. She's always been there. We've, we've got a community in our nonprofit, the Center for Research on Addiction and Brain Health. We have about 50 active people in there now. We were going to do 100 and she's, she's, we're leading the new leaders who are in school right now. That's one of the projects that we're, that's one of the companies that we have is this nonprofit. And what's it and, called? Yeah, I, I, I want to make sure that, that John gets some time here because she's <laughs> absolutely amazing. A lot of the things that we're doing just would not be possible. Well, looking forward to this. So, John, why don't I ask you the question then? Can you? Yeah. What's the name of the organization? Like, there's so many. Uh, Tom, yeah. and you actually described this as a, I think it was a three-legged stool earlier. And so mm-hmm. there's different pieces. Is it four-legged? Did I miss a leg it's, somewhere? It's more, it's more like, it's more like six or yeah, multi-legged. It's more like a centipede. <laughs> oh, <that's a> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's- yeah. It definitely is. Um, Thanks for that amazing intro. Um, NAD has become my life for about 14 years now. I love it Um, as much as it gives and restores the lives of um, patients and their family members um, and their support system. um, It also gives back to me in so many ways. Earlier this year, Tom and I had decided to partner. Um, NAD is actually a very small community. Um, The the ones that um, the the ones that uh, of us ha- that have been here for a while, um, we all know each other. We all, although we're not affiliated any any manner, um, we all are connected in some way. Um, and so, um, Tom and I have been friends through the NAD community, and recently we've um, we've partnered up. Um, we both had um, centers. He had the NAD Treatment Center, which was a physical location, and I had Bridgeway Institute. Um, we have closed those down, and we are attempting to. Well, we we're deciding if we want to do a holistic, um, integrative, um, longevity, um, kind of focused, almost like an inpatient retreat center, um, here in Boca. Um, or do we want to take this model that we've developed through our years of experience? And do we want to, instead of just being one center, do we want to cha- uh, tr- train a multitude of physicians to do this um, uh, throughout the states. And so that way, people won't have to just um, folk. I mean, they won't just have to come to us. There's a multitude of people that can give them these services. That's so that's amazing. one of the th- I think thank you. Should you. Do both. Yeah, I know. Right. And, <laughs> and train you have, at, like, you know, your center and then yeah. they invite people to come to you and train and then go do their thing. I think that would be the best of all worlds, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then we also have our nonprofit organization, which is Center for Research on Addiction and Brain Health. It's also known as Longevity Underground. And our focus is kind of threefold. One, it's to cure addiction. One, it is to, I mean, two, it's to optimize brain health. And then um, lastly, it's to increase lifespan by 20 years. And this is our, this is our mission. And I'm absolutely certain that someone once said, wow, that's a big goal, but it's completely doable. And so, um, with NAD? Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's with NAD and all of these synergistic um, modalities and treatment services that we do alongside of it. Um, although NAD is an amazing piece, um, it's a piece of a greater puzzle. And so um, at putting that puzzle together, there's an integration of other treatments and other um, services that an individual will need in order to create op- optimal wellness. And so um, we're that's another organization. Another amazing thing that we have is longevity diagnostic research. It is actually a, um, Tom will describe this much better than I am, but it's an NAD test. And it is actually in its um, infancy stages. It's in an IRB study right now. Um, but I think that once we have this clinic, um, the, the information 
that we process the information that we're getting now, we'll have a viable NAD test um, in the near future. So an NAD test in terms of assessing people's endogenous NAD levels before treatment or before treatment and after treatment? So what we're hoping to see is that um, eventually we have an NAD test that will show um, an individual what their NAD levels are and then hopefully from there provide enough information that they can then render a treatment service that might be, one may need something as simple as sublingual tablets, and then another individual may need IV intervention, just depending on what their NAD levels are and what's good for the individual. The the, uh, 40-year-old active healthy male is going to have much different NAD levels comparatively to if they had all the same um, factor, all the same lifestyle factors, um, just difference in age. We know that aging is now one of the things that deplete, well, lessens our inability to, um, for me, aging lessens our inability to create NAD within the body. That's a whole nother conference because we can spend an hour on that. However, um, we know that we know that NAD levels decline. And um, so, what we're hoping to do is look at the factors of the individual and then factor in where they are in life, utilize that NAD test to set to give a recommendation as far as treatment. Amazing. Um, what kind of test is it? Is it like a blood test or saliva or? Yeah. So it's a blood test and it measures how many factors, Tom? I want to say 26. So yeah. it's, it's not officially a test yet. It's, it's still in the testing phase. And so it's that's important to state. It's not this is not a com- commercially available test, but right. Um, in terms of what what it's attempting to do is to test at least a couple dozen different metabolites. Um, we've been trying to do serum, whole blood, finger prick, various different methodologies. It, it's I, I, it's hard for me to go deep into sure. the, the science of it because I'm more of a of an entrepreneur, but. Um, in terms of the tests that are out there in development, I would say we would put this up sort of at the top. I, I, I would I would hope so. Um, okay. But it, it needs to go through needs to go through testing. Yeah, trial become, phase. Something that's commercially available. Yeah. Cool. And so, what's the uh, timeline on that? You figure like a a couple of years or months or no. yeah, a few a few months. I'd say by we're hoping that everything, um, you know. 2021 is our goal to kind of roll everything out. Um, And so better year than 2020 to roll anything out. Yeah, right. (laughs) We, we couldn't, we couldn't, (laughs) we couldn't potentially challenge the, the potential plot twist in 2020. So we're going to wait till 2021 to to bring things to fruition. Um, And so I just wanted to touch on a few more things. We we do have another company that is Longevity Collective. This is our e-commerce online supplemental store. One of the things that I saw as a practitioner working with NAD was the common denominator for people not getting treatment was, well, that costs a whole lot of money. And yes, it does. And that's the unfortunate part. Um, if I could put NAD in a crop plane and dust the entire world with it, I absolutely would if I had, you know, the money to do it. Um, So our version of crop planing, um, everyone is getting supplements available to the individual that are potent, that are pure, that are bioavailable. And so we've developed a product line. And so what we're hoping is that this makes it more cost effective for the consumer that's looking for NAD. And so does this exist now? Like do you, the e-store and you've got a line of supplements. So what are the different forms of NAD that are available in your store right now for people to access? Yeah. Um, so right now we have a sublingual lozenger that's a hundred milligrams. Of NAD? Uh, yeah. Of, NAD? of pure NAD. Yeah. The only, the only thing that we have in the formulations that we currently have is NAD. Then we have two other versions. It's an ion phoretic patch. We have one patch that's 500 milligrams. And then we have another patch that is a thousand milligrams. It's the highest potency cons- 
consumer NAD product on the market right now. Um, I think it's at a, a pretty decent cost. We're trying to get the cost down even further so that we can make it more available to more people. We, we hope to do that through the efforts of some of the products. Uh, so, so two things. Um, one, we want to back it up with the, the bioavailability um, and the efficacy of the product with some projects that we're rolling out with CRAB, Center for Research on Addiction and Brain Health, that we'll talk a little bit ab- um, more about in just a moment, because I'm really excited about these projects. So I have to, <laughs> that's one of the things I have to talk about. Okay. Um, and, then, um, and then secondly, we are wanting to make it more cost effective. We're going to do it through that route. And then, so yeah, so these products are available and um, I'd love to just before someone, if someone's even questioning purchasing them, um, I'm always available to talk to an individual about, you know, about NAD and about the products and about um, other options that they may have, um, patches and sublinguals and nasal spray and subcutaneous versus um, versus. Um, an IV. Um, there's a there's a very different um, administ well not just the administration but there's a very different outcome from all of these different um, avenues of of treatment of delivering NAD. So can we talk about that a little bit? So because so you don't mm-hmm. yet or is your goal eventually to have an intranasal as well or are you just going to stick to the the electrophoresis patches and the sublingual. Yeah, there are actually several um, um, transnasal um, applications that are out right now. Yeah, Um, I've used used some of them. So I'm just wondering, so how would somebody decide? Obviously, the IV is the gold standard. It's the best way to get the NAD into your system at high dose. It's expensive. No denying it. Uh, yeah, people might get it feel a little nauseous, like, you know, it's got a bit of a bad yeah. rap. So next to after that, we have the intranasal, we have the sublingual, we have the sub Q, and we've got the transdermal. So yeah. talk a little bit like why would would somebody use the intranasal? I would guess it's it's a different avenue of, of administration. Is there a situation in which someone would choose intranasal over the others? Or, yeah, totally. So Absolutely. What would that be? So it's very important to work with a practitioner or provider that really understands NAD and has a little bit of a learning curve through experience and and also understands the integrative aspect of other things. So for me, um, in doing an assessment with someone that's coming to me, I'm looking for information that may be potential to um, does someone have exposure to Marcons? Um, do they have some type of biofilm in their in their nasal cavity that may potentially may inhibit the absorption of um, of NAD transnasally? So that's something to that's something to focus on. Same thing with um, the oral administration of things. So um, there are some new amazing tablets that are coming out. Um, I think through through my experience, um, just a regular oral NAD capsule is probably the least effective, but there are some amazing technology um that that's coming out that are um in cap- micro encapsulation within a capsule that or um liposomal versions of NAD I think all of these are great but you have to know what's going on within the microbiome you have to know the condition of someone's gut and you have to know um you know if they're going to absorb and assimilate um whether uh, it's nutraceuticals that you're delivering to them or even pharmaceuticals. So right. all of these, all of these things factor in when looking for the right treatment for, for the individual. Okay. So to simplify it for people though, assuming, mm-hmm. and, and I would think that sublingual is going to bypass a lot of the gut issues because you're Truly. getting straight into the bloodstream. The intranasal, assuming someone isn't dealing with Marcons or, you know, biofilms in the nasal cavity, can we just like very simply like who should think about intranasal 
as a yeah. is it because they're trying to beat brain fog or something else. Um, and yeah. then for the sublingual, obviously this is going to be a much lower dose. Yeah. So what could people maybe expect from a sublingual or should it be the yeah. kind of thing that you do in between patches or IVs or sub Q? What's so can we just talk a little bit about that? So for the intranasal, like I have intranasal here and I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I, I've never really yeah. noticed much. So I'm yeah. curious about what should I be noticing? <laughs> yeah, yes, a- absolutely. Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I want to hear what you have to say. We No, I I was just kind of kind of con- going to kind of sort yeah. of um put them in order um, yeah, yeah, if I it. if I were to um prioritize um I'm not going to say best but most optimal availability of NAD and then at the end you know, things that we're taking and they may render um, a 30% um, bioavailability. So of course, IV all day long is going, you're going to render your best results. Then beyond IV, um, we have seen, um, Tom absolutely loves um, a subcutaneous injection. Now, um, the thing with a subcutaneous injection is due to the way that we have to compound it, you're only able to get about 50 to 100 milligrams of NAD into an injectable. So think about think about the amount that you're getting there. Um, and it's usually delivered um, subcutaneously. Um, then the patches, the patches, um, we're have it. We're we're able to deliver a much higher dose, so 500 to a thousand milligrams um, in the in the patch. Um, I looked at the information as far as the technology that we're delivering it with the ion foretic t- technology, and what it says is due to conditions of skin and everything else, you know, that we have to factor in. It's about Mm, somewhere between 65 to 80 percent bioavailable. Okay. Um, af- after that, I would say um, nasal spray and sublinguals. There, you're getting from nasal spray or sublinguals, you're getting between 50 and 100 milligrams. Of course, you know, you're bypassing the gut with the, sub- I mean, with the sublingual. Also, in that um, in that ranking, I would also put the liposomal version of NAD. Um, I think it's really good, and I think that with liposomal or some of these micro encapsulations that we see, um, you can also render a larger dose. Um, and then there's also some formulations that have NAD and NR um, or NAD and N- NMN um, mixed together. So you're getting something that's building NAD long term, and then you're getting the initial dose of NAD too. I think those products are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, And then lastly, I would qualify just a regular um, NAD supplement. I've seen patients and and consumers have just from the oral supplement, I've seen patients and consumers have a good, if not better result from NR supplementation and then just B3 supplementation too. Interesting. So, so what are the results that people should be looking for? Like what, when somebody is using a, so many people use these supplements and, you know, they kind of sit and wait. Yeah. um, Yeah. So, so typically, I mean, NAD is an energy substrate in the body. Like it's an NAD, it's a, it's an energy molecule. So maybe we should talk a little bit about what does NAD do at a cellular level? Then how does that translate into what we experience? Absolutely. Um, uh, so to talk a little bit about what ones are experiencing, and I think that when we talk about energy, um, we are assuming that we're going to have something, um, a response like this, maybe mild caffeination or a little perk up or something like that. But what we're really doing with NAD is NAD is responsible for greater than 400 400 metabolic functions. And one of the main function that we always talk about is the restoration to mitochondria and the production of ATP. And with the normal natural production of ATP, what it's going to lend to is cellular function, which is absorption, assimilation, detoxification, um, 
uh, also um, reproduction of cells. And so really. that, yeah, that is the energy that we're wanting to re- to to restore at the foundation. And then what happens, we do see an accumulative effect as someone. So I do have to say this real quick, um, just kind of put this in the middle. Stress is a natural depleter of NAD. And so stressors look like a multitude of things. It might look like disease, um, disease or diagnoses, um, within the body. Um, it may also look like, um, it may also look like epigenetic factors, poor lifestyle, things like that. 2020. Um, yeah, 2020. 2020. Yeah, <laughs> who would have thought? We all this see that's awesome. the. Cr- I I am I am th- really thinking about that crop plane now. I'm gonna start a go- GoFundMe for the crop plane for the NAD crop plane and just stand outside everybody and just like you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's it. Um, just not not the other kind of crop plane, just this kind. Yeah, yeah. Um, just make sure you have the right one. We'll have smiley faces and stuff on it. So stress is a natural depleter. So if our bodies are out of alignment in any fashion, where that starts to affect us at is at the cellular level. Um, you know, we are we're feeling fatigued, but we're not feeling fatigued because we're missing energy at a cellular level. We're I mean at at you know a, a whole body total physical level. We're feeling fatigued because our cells are starting to lose their vitality. Yeah. And so that is the most important, I think, function of NAD. And so with um, delivering it to people that have led years of um, a stressful life, um, it's not going to be, and stress may even look like I am, um, I'm overactive in my workout you know, or I am overactive in my, my work life or, you know, it, it's, it's imbalance. Sure. And so as we deliver an AD at first, um, there are two people that respond, um, to it in a, in a sense to where they, um, they become, I don't want to say slightly ill because that's not what it is, but their body has to, their body almost doesn't recognize the supplementation. It's kind of like it has to get used to this NAD supplementation. So what we see clinically is that if someone is chronically ill, they won't be able to tolerate supplementation um, very well. Um, It gives me an an idea watching them clinically um, that there is some mitochondrial dysfunction. So and you're Um, talking about IVs here, right? I'm talking about IVs. I'm also talking about the injectable too, because you will see an intolerance to the injectable. Um, And then um, also with patients that are addicted. These are also patients that you'll see an intolerance to the, the drip or an intolerance to the injectable. And what I believe theirs is, is once again, mitochondrial um, dysfunction, but it has to, it, it's just affecting a different area of the body that has been overworked and overused for a long period of time. Right. And abused, I guess. To and abused, degree. yeah, but, totally. But on the IV front, I think that even people that are reasonably healthy, there's a certain degree of physical discomfort when you're getting an, an NAD IV that people can expect, correct? So I have seen, I have seen some extremely healthy individuals and we're looking at, um, things like telomere lengths and, um, inflammation factors and, you know, looking at pathogenic profiles and everything is like, they're checking the list, healthy, 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 healthy. You can give them as upwards as a thousand milligrams and they don't feel it. And so yeah, very interesting. And so um, they'll rock through an IV, you know, two hours, whereas someone who is chronically ill or maybe even the average individual that has just imbalanced in their life one way or another that has then contributed to NAD depletion, what happens is, is we see these individuals just being able to tolerate NAD a little bit less, including okay. myself. <laughs> Well, I plan to come see you when I'm in Florida in January. Yes, so we'll, please do. We'll see if I can stay vertical through the whole thing or if I fall over. 
Yes. Okay. So, Tom, you know, you've done a great job of giving John the, the floor. Um, maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about your role here, your story, your backstory, a little bit of your backstory with NAD. And then what I'd like to do is maybe go into some of the other projects, because I know there's a couple more of those legs we haven't even touched on yet, that a couple of which you're quite in, excited about. So you guys can decide amongst yourself who's going to talk about that. And then we'll do kind of a quick little question period at the end. So yeah. over to you, Mr. Tom. <laughs> Thank let's you. Give, Thank let's you. give John uh, a break. <laughs> you know, it was... Um, it was it was 2013 was a lot like 2020 for me because I had been sick for going on seven years and I've been I spent most of my time in bed, probably 15 hours a day in bed, um, and then I lost uh, half my family in a car crash. So sorry. And it it you know and and I I sort of traced all this back to adverse reactions that I had with prescription drugs that had an impact on my mitochondria. Um, and so it was a real like roll of the dice to see if NAD could work. I, I had, I'd been a part of these online communities that focused on reactions to fluoroquinolone antibiotics, but I also had reactions to um, a, a drug called Flagyl, which is an anti-parasite um, drug anti it's, you know, you get sick. Sometimes the doctor will just throw these things at you there. Um, a lot of these drugs are sort of failed chemo drugs that they, they decided awesome. to use it. Yeah. It, yeah. So you're taking a failed chemo drug and, um, many black box warnings were not on there and they, they're still not on there, you know? And so I've been an advocate ever since. Um, but it, it I really went, there was this profound shift that I went from, from there's, there's this idea from psychology called locus of control, which is this, uh, this, this a sort of personality trait of, of how well we think we have control over our world. And um, my, my personality had shifted from not having any sense of control. I, when I wake up, I would realize I didn't have any energy some days and, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Call my friends. Hey, I can't go anywhere. I'm in bed today. Um, and it was very depressing. Um, you know, and, but in that sort of process, it led me to NAD um, and having taken it. And it was, um, there was this massive transformation from a sense of, of um, not knowing what kind of, what can I, what I can do that day and how much control I, over I had in my life to being extraordinarily active. Okay. Amazing. I mean, right t these days I've been working about a uh, hundred hours, sometimes a hundred hours a week, 70, 80 hours a week. No problem. I think some of my friends, some of the people I work with are like, you need a break, but, um, <laughs> okay, we uh, need a break. <laughs> but it, it's, it's been, it's, it, it's, there's, there's that huge, there was this huge shift that happened for me. And it really actually gave me a huge opportunity to mourn the loss of my family. And there was a point in time about a week, about a week into doing the IV therapy where something had happened to my cells and all the pain just sort of was obliterated because I, it wasn't just the, the chronic fatigue, the, the worst part of it. And there were several things that were completely off. The worst part, of it was the chronic pain. And, um, I was on opiates at the time. Um, and they, they said, you should come off the opiates. I'm like, I can't handle myself coming off of these. And they're like, right. just give it a shot. But I was in massive pain. And, um, and there was this point at day seven where there's all the pain went away or not all of it, but so much of it went away that I was like, I mean, like life is worth living again. Amazing. I, I, I had only, I, I'd only wanted to live because there was an actual hope. I remember telling my, my roommate, I said, I said, he had told me, he's like, you have to learn to live with the hand that you were dealt. And I, I countered and said, the only reason why I'm living right now is that maybe I might get a few new cards. And so that was the big thing for me. And it like, 
that was what NAD was for me. Wow. And, and what it was for me was this, um, I, I went from thinking, wow, I, I wonder, I wonder what this could do. Like I, I didn't, we didn't even have any idea when I had taken it. So like the, the world that John came from was this world where no one really knew about it. So she, she got the secret before hardly anybody. Like I had gotten the secret. And then six months later, David Sinclair at Harvard, um, and he was a protege of this, this, this other um, scientist called, uh, his name is Lenny Garenti. Yeah. At MIT. Um, and there's, there, I, I have this joke in science communities, like the six degrees of Lenny Garenti, like <laughs> everyone had somehow studied from Lenny at one point. And like, if you hadn't studied under Lenny, then there's a good chance you don't know what you're doing. Um, but so, so uh, wait a minute. So how did you find NAD? Like, how did you come to it from your bed? I mean, it was, it, it was, it was research. Today. I mean, it was, I, I never, I never really gave up and, and, um, I was online and th there was a few of these other, um, friends of mine who were also sick and they said, you, Hey, do you want to roll the dice on this one? And I said, well, wow. it makes, it, it makes sense. Let's give it a shot. And, and I want to talk it, the, the, so floxies as they're called people that have had adverse reactions to fluoroquinolones, we call ourselves floxies. It, it still, it, it still doesn't perform very well. IV NAD uh, in some cases can make people more sick. Th these are very sick individuals. Yeah, and no, so, I, I see a lot of them in the group. I mean, it's it's heartbreaking, really. It, it, it is. I mean, it's it's a lot like the COVID long haulers or akathisia yeah. or Lyme disease. I mean, it, it's like it's a we're a tough tough group. I mean, yeah. we're a, it's a it we're a tough group. I mean, well, and you're and you're in a bad spot. You know, like yeah. it's, uh, it's the ALS group is a tough group. I mean, it, these are they, they, we're in pain, um, but they always tell me, like, don't endorse NAD too much because some of us still have a problem with it. And so like the Lyme patients, um, they can be highly sensitive to to NAD. Um, but but for whatever reason, it, it worked really well with me. And so okay. you start low and go slow with some with some patients who are, um, who could be problematic, you know, uh, and that's why it's really important that there's a, a, a really good doctor that, that has experience with it, or, uh, there's a room full of people that, that, that have had a lot of experiences with, with NAD. Um, and, and it, but that, but that's not, that's not a, uh, an NAD phenomenon. That's a floxy phenomenon. Like mm -hmm. you can give them vitamin C, you can give them oral yeah. vitamins, you can give them practically anything; it'll make them sick. So, okay. well, so it, low and slow is the way to go. And I see that also with Lyme and CFS. Like so many of these chronic conditions, these are people who's. It's funny, like their body needs so much, and yet they can only take whatever it is at very tiny doses, very gradually to yeah even affect a, res a positive response, right? My experience with that has been, um, has been that um, there's some kind of compromise with detoxification. Right. And so as we are trying to put um, the, the term that comes to mind um, because I'm from Louisiana is you have to drain the swamp first. Sure. You know, you have to make sure that, um, that their routes of detoxification are not compromised. Um, and then the application of, um, of, you know, any type of pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, integrative um, modalities for them. Right. That makes total sense. Cause you end up with a buildup of metabolites or toxins or whatever the case may be. And Everything goes south from there. All right, Tom, back to you. Well, I mean, it's just been an adventure, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I mean, even from the very beginning, it's when when there was little hope, I had already was was measuring my NAD levels. I had already sent my blood um, to the UK to have it analyzed under spectroscopy for for NAD and and, and counting mitochondria. Um, and you know. It's something that like Steve Jobs said in, in an address was, you know, the past, the, the past makes sense when you, when you go backwards, you know, when you start yeah. at the end and go backwards and it's like, 
it's like this whole there's a sense of sort of destiny about NAD. Like there like various different things that we take sometimes have different kinds of they have a different sort of essence to it. You know, like Prozac's a happy pill, you know. Right. Um they, 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 they sort of have a certain you know, testosterone makes you feel like strong and you, you know, but you're also kind of, you can be angry. The thing, the, the, the nature of NAD is very much, it, it's a very peaceful thing. It's, um, it's effects on serotonin and oxytocin are, are profound. It's, it's effects on other neurotransmitters. Um, it, 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 with, with NAD, the mitochondria can do so much. And with the mitochondria doing so much, the neuron, can can be firing at all cylinders and you know i i like to make the analogy of the monarch butterfly it flies from canada to mexico and it it, it, it often there's this living and dying process along the way and it, it arrives at that same location and how does it do that you're in canada how does it go all the way across the u.s i can't even imagine like <laughs> i i i can't fathom it right like if you but, think about but, it but, we couldn't walk <laughs> Well, it, it uses it uses the moon to sort of navigate, um, but NAD very much works on NAD. I mean, sorry, on DNA, okay, and on protein expression. Very much works on that. And so there's something in this butterfly that there, that all of the archetypes and the the, the messages and we in our DNA is this is this sort of unconscious, this sort of uh, uh, instinctual uh, instructions on how to live our lives. And like, for me, there's something very, um, and people always say, don't go spiritual. Don't, don't go on the, don't go into that direction. You're going to lose them. But like, there's, there's a feeling that I have with NAD yeah. and, and, and it's very much like a sense of um, uh, there's a sense of peace and a sense of destiny that that's, uh, and a sense, and there's so much you get, there's so often, there's so many people that they take NAD and they're like, I can't believe how much energy that I have now. It's like, it, it feels good, so good um, to have all this energy. And when you meet, when you meet older people, they do fine in the few, the first few hours of the day. And then the middle of the day, they're like, eh. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, they're out. Like, it, yeah. like, it's like I can only do t- if you're down. 70 years old, you can only do t- TV or cards between you know, five and 10 PM, like with NAD, it's like, you could be like, you know, rearranging the basement, writing a book. Um, you can be taking a, 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 a an exam certification test or something. I mean, like you can be doing something that requires a great deal of, um, mental, uh, energy stress, um, that is, it makes you feel youthful in a sense. It, like there's, there's definitely something very youthful uh, about, about doing this, this NA, this IV NAD, this, this NAD stuff. And it's, there's also something very uh, cumulative to, you know, the, that's the great thing about the patch is that um, it, it's extremely potent. It's extremely economical. It bypasses the gut and I'll get to the negatives too. So give me an opportunity. I'll get to those next. But the good thing about it is that the patches that we have are a gram. Okay. And they're so much cheaper than, than the IV, which is amazing. Um, and so people can get that really high dose, just, just like some of the, some of the early work that David Sinclair did in 2013 on mice, he was injecting them in the gut. It wasn't oral with NMN, it was gut injections. And then seeing that over a period of seven days, just mm-hmm. like I did. So when I saw that journal and I saw it in Time Magazine and he was he was put on 100 most influential people and there's only two scientists. So that means something. But what I, I saw my, I saw like, he did it with a mouse. I did it with myself. He, yeah. he tested the mice of the tissue. I tested my self I like what else is possible at that point right you know and that's so so what we have now with the patch is something that's very much publicly available um and it and you can get that cumulative dose which is 
which is quite often necessary because if you do like let's say a few and you know a couple ivs it it might not be enough it wasn't enough for me right. i mean and, and how much I, could you administer yeah. an iv just to be just to compare Anywhere between um, 500 and 2,000 milligrams should be administered in an IV, but they have some places that are um, ask when you are going because um, there are some places that are administering 250 and um, they're just calling it an, an, an NAD infusion and, um, you know, um, it's, it's, it's all going to... NAD does have an accumulative effect. So um, is it going to help on some level? Yes. Um, but are you getting your, really, are you getting your money's worth? For sure. um, that's what I would tell the consumer. Yeah. Um, to add real quick, and then I'm going to let Tom have the floor again, because I'm, I'm sitting here captivated. I'm like, yeah, that sounds so amazing, because it's so true. Um on a spectrum, and this kind of um, this kind of goes with what we're expecting people to see as a result of NAD administration. So, on a spectrum, we're seeing um, clarity of thought, um, improvement in cognition. We're seeing restoration of sleep patterns. Um, we're also seeing energy, but the energy that I'm referring to is an all-around kind of general energy, not like this caffeinated up. So it's the energizer bunny not dying off at, you know, 6 p.m. It's the energizer bunny waking up in the morning vivaciously and being able to go throughout the day um, without needing the coffee or the pick me up or the, the um, what are those drinks called? The Red Bull, um, you yeah. know, to get, yeah, yeah. to get them through the day. Um, well, it would be like and, deep energy, right? It's a cellular energy. So it's, it's a cellular it's really energy, like a well of energy that you have within you that you can tap into all of a sudden. Exactly. And you can't compare that to, um, to the caffeinated energy. Cause it's not, yeah. it doesn't even feel the same. Um, yeah. and then my favorite thing that I see on a spectrum happening for, um, for patients and consumers is that general sense of well being, the uplifting and mood. Um, yeah. I feel that that is the most important thing. Cause it's almost like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg physical or mental well being, but they're so closely intertwined that, um, that we need to make sure that we are taking care of our mental health. Amazing. That's amazing. Okay. Well, I'm sold, but we can, um, we can go back to Tom now, I guess. And Oh, well, I mean, you know, uh, with the patch, um, and so we're, we are, we are selling the patch. One of the, one of the issues with the patch is that you got it. Some people have some skin irritation from it. We also do the the sublingual. Yeah, we were talking earlier before the program <laughs> that you had a that you had a the big rash from it. So I'm, I'm the canary in the coal mine, though. I'm the girl. <laughs> if somebody's going to have a crazy reaction mm-hmm. that people will look at and go, "Wow, like that doesn't normally happen," that would be me. So, and I believe me, mm-hmm. nobody is more annoyed with the fact that I don't get to use the patch than me. <laughs> So what what we discussed forward to this what we discussed before the podcast was that you, that you you want to do some things to decrease any adverse reaction to to the skin irritation that could occur, which is one of the earlier patches that I would do was like a fifteen hour patch, and so now the patches we have are four hours, and a lot of the delivery happens in the first couple of hours. It's sort of most of the stuff goes in, and so maybe even. There might be some, uh, uh, it still have a very uh, cost-effective therapy, even even if you only have it on for uh, a couple hours, just because it's so much is getting delivered at, at a short period of time. But maybe putting a little calamine lotion afterwards, not before. You don't want the calamine lotion going in. No, that would but, be a lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, those those could be some ways of, of dealing with um, potential skin irritation, setting your timer on your phone. Um, and, and that, that could, that could alleviate some of the, much of the issues. I think it could just decrease it by, you know, 90%. So, but again, like you, you were, like you said, you were, um, in your particular situation, you had some issues with, um, it, it, even though you did that. So, um, but I, that's the first time that, that I've heard that, but, you know, um, nevertheless, 
Um, there's different, course. there's different, <laughs> different routes, you know, sure. but I mean, it's, this whole thing's been a, a huge, a huge adventure. And, um, I, I mean, I've gone to, con- we, I had a conference, um, on NAD, we're going to, a, there'll be another conference that's coming up. Um, but I've gone to the conferences with the scientists as well yeah. and that they have like different, they have different, like historical versions like oh yes the you know the beginning of the world was in was in the the 1990s when Lenny was looking at yeast and was using NAD and you know and then but the the clinical history goes back to um it it goes back it uh at the at a bare minimum to 1948 with the first IV NAD infusions for for uh morphine addiction in Italy Okay. So you have that, you have this one group of, um, of scientists that are like, this is the science and you have to go by testing. And then you have this other group going, well, we've been doing this since 1948. And so it's very interesting to see these two different silos. And, and I love the fact that the scientific silo is also, they're also playing with these other, these other therapies for, for longevity too, you know? And so, it, it, and and there also there's these different schisms as well, you know, different groups competing with each other with their different um, rooting for their for for, for their different um, molecules and therapies and stuff like that. So that's it's just been this huge adventure. And so, you know, one of the things that we decided to do early on is to to do a movie on NAD. So if you have show notes, we can put a link to, to the movie that we're doing on NAD where we're, we're interviewing everybody. We're, we're keeping it as open as possible um, and really getting the experts out on NAD. And, and because this is such a, just an amazing story, Rob Freed, who's the, the president and CEO of Chromadex, they're, they're Americas and they're really know, sort of known as one of the as one of the most important players, if not one of the most important player player in the NAD space, um, Rob Fried, he, he made a bunch of movies. And so um, when I met with him three, three, four years ago, um, he has an Academy Award. And so he put, he wanted to put me in his film and I'm like, I'm going to put you in my film. <laughs> um, but he, he made the Moody movie Rudy. And he just, he's, he thought the same way about, about NAD and about this quest for, this sort of eternal quest for the fountain of youth um, and, and what could that be? And so, but, but we're also, Jean and I also thinking about, you know, how um, NAD can make a huge impact on um, homelessness or, or addiction because the, the effects on addiction are so profound and, and on uh, um, in psycho, psychological problems um, because yeah. of there's a, there's a whole history um, where vitamin B3 is used for, for, uh, addiction and homelessness, um, yeah. that goes back, um, and, at least a hundred right. years. Joseph Goldberger, he helped to find brewer's yeast. He found that brewer's yeast had some component that was curative to pellagra, which was NAD of deficiency. And that was in, that was around 1920. And pellagra is a disease. It was it was thought to be an infection. It was thought to be a vi- uh, some sort of infection. Is it mosquitoes, flies, rats, feces? What is it? Like Find out, Doctor Goldberger. Yeah. And what they found, we came back and said it's nutrition. Like I, it, it usually happens with people who eat a lot of corn, um, but it's it's really just bad. It's just it's it has something to do with food and and it. But he, he had an isolated brewer's yeast. Um, and you know it's interesting because there's some information coming out on on brewers yeast right now for COVID, interesting. and how it can. There's some really good stuff. Maybe we'll put that in the show notes too. So, brewers yeast has nicotinic acid, which is sort of a a low grade B3 vitamin. Um, but there might be something really exciting there with this um, this lower grade B3 vitamin. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's what's so exciting is we don't really. We're, I think we're scratching the surface with with, with NAD. Um, and that's why we have the nonprofit. We want to, we're doing research and we want to do research on PTSD, homelessness. Like we can have an impact on getting people off the street with, 
with this with this one vitamin it's like th- it could be that important you know mm-hmm. um and so i think a lot of the people involved with nad these days are they're in it because of what they because they think that you know ho- helping homeless people is is something that occurs as an opportunity for them like i i think of it as something like i want to be the guy that that ran into that burning building and came out with the kid and the puppy or something like it, sure. it, it, i think it means something to me to to know that like that's a potential thing that we can see that we can do something for our veterans Perfect. that we could do the success rates for for addiction some success rates show some of the, some of these therapies show a 5% success rate. And then some of the success rates for NAD therapy, some of them show 95% success. And these are two, they're, they're, these are two different standards. you got to look at different years and it's not, this is not an apples to apples comparison, but it at least shows that when you're looking at COVID like death rates from drug overdose every year, yeah. 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 people dying every year that, which is sort of in the ballpark is COVID that like, wow, this needs to be taken seriously Sure, and people need to support yeah. this. Amazing. And I've, I've lost friends to addiction. So there's very much a, we're very much in it for like, we're doing something very sacred. This is, I think this is for humanity. And, and and you read some of the some of the bi, some of the the letters of Goldberger or Hoffer, some of these earlier doctors when when they were working with vitamin B three, you can see it in their letters too. Like they were very much doing something that had meaningful, almost spiritual connection to. Hoffer was different. He was Hoffer was one of the first MDs that worked in psychiatry, worked with schizophrenia, and used. He was able, he claims that he was able to cure schizophrenics in three or four days with NAD, IV NAD. And he he wasn't some unpopular doctor. I mean, functional medicine doctors look at Hoffer as, you know, as this sort of very important historical and when medical doctor. Have, when was Hoffer? Hoffer died probably like seven years ago. Um but he he did a lot of the early work on vitamin therapies. Uh, he had gotten grants, um, particularly as it related to to psychiatric problems. He was also he was also he also stumbled on stumbled upon psychedelic research too, which okay. was good. so which is Hoffer, now not right? to be not to be confused with Hoffman. No, nope. um, Hoffer. Abram I mean, Hoffer is author molecular nutrition. That's one of the books that he wrote um, along with Linus Pauling. Um, and they really were the founding fathers of looking at um, utilizing nutrition to heal the body. Amazing. Okay. Well guys, we're, um, we're getting, um, we're getting on here. So just to recap, longevity collective is the e-store where mm-hmm. people can get NAD patches and the sublingual NAD but now do people need to have a consult with you, Sean, before they, or they can just order this stuff up? Like, how does that? They can just go online and order it. However, um, I am currently um, working with, um, I, I'm more than happy to just chat with for five minutes with someone, but if um, they're wanting to do a consult, um, what I'm willing to do is work with their um, their provider. Um, because I am not um, practicing at this time. Um, I'm willing to work with their provider to help them create a more holistic, integrative approach that has NAD uh, um, in the center of their treatment. Perfect. Yeah. So understanding that NAD is really part of an ecosystem approach that you would take. Um, Then we have, we have longevity. There's longevity collective. There was a longevity Longevity Diagnostic Research is oh. where you're doing the research on the testing for NAD. Yeah. And that you're hoping is going to kind of be something that's going to be available over the next few months. Yeah. And then there's there's another longevity. Longevity Underground. Longevity, longevity Underground. underground. That's, and the, that, that's the not-for-profit, yeah. right? That's our nonprofit. And okay. 
Um, just to kind of bring these all together and how we're tying them all together okay. is that we were looking for a cost-effective way to do clinical trials with the homeless population, veterans, um, also COVID and um, an aging population. These are the four things that we're focusing on because they really do align with our mission. So if we can get a project uh, or we're centering the project around the around delivering NAD in a cost effective way through a patch, then collecting the data through these tests, and then utilizing that science in order to gain momentum in the NAD community and, you know, give some human trials and, um, and support to moving NAD forward. So um, that's kind of how our efforts all tie together. Amazing. And uh, thank you. Um, and so, um, you know, in, in saying that we're always, um, we're always looking for, um, for people that, that feel as passionate about medical revolution and about NAD as we do, because longevity underground just doesn't stop with NAD. It's about creating a shift in the paradigm, um, uh, that that we now have as um, as you know what we what we call medicine or the practice of medicine. So we're hoping that to create this you know revolution to empower individuals to inspire people to advocate for themselves and say, hey, I understand that this is the standard of care and this is the protocol that my insurance pays for, but that's not what my body is telling me that I need. And you know I'm needing I'm I'm. I'm speaking up for myself. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm empowered. I am in control of my future and the wellness of my, of my body, you know? And so that's what we're ultimately, so we're, we're wanting people to, to join us in our approach. So if there's anyone that feels inspired and, you know, or is looking for a purpose <laughs> or looking for a cause. Um, Longevity Underground is your place. Um, we do this from a very individualized yet greater consensus kind of approach. So we listen to the uniqueness and the uh, what the individual can bring. And then as a group, um, we, we tailor um, either we support the individual by writing white papers or doing research or whatever it might be to move this sh- uh, paradigm shift forward. So you're basically, this is a call out for volunteers, basically people who come mm-hmm. in, people to come in and contribute to this initiative. Check us out. Yeah. See Amazing. if this is something, yeah. See Amazing. if this is something that, um, that works. Yeah. Fantastic. And so, um, I'm just looking at the time we're, we're kind of, there's, I have a bunch of questions here. I wonder if maybe what I should do is we could talk about those briefly offline and then um, I can include the answers to the questions in the show notes. But a lot of this was, was really people wanting to understand, and I don't want to send us too far down another path here, but people start trying to understand talking about, you know, what about NR versus NMN versus NAD? And we know that NR and NMN are precursor molecules to NAD. And so when we take these in, we're giving the body the building blocks or the starter materials, if as it were, to produce its own NAD. But I know that it's particularly maybe is it in the case of M- NMN that there's questions about whether it it gets degraded before the body can actually use it. What are you, do you have any thoughts I on can, that? I can answer this question. Okay. Okay. So it, the, the answer is it depends on who you're talking to. That's <laughs> the answer. Okay. So um, my favorite answer, it depends. <laughs> so, so if you're talking to an NR scientist like Charlie Brenner, he's going to tell you NR is better. If you're talking to an NMN scientist like David Sinclair, take it, tell you, he's going to tell you NMN is better. You're talking to me, I'm going to say NAD is better. The reason why I feel, and we'll, we'll go into why, okay, with with N, with with NAD, okay, there's there's a few reasons why. It, it, one is you you feel, there's a there's a subjective sensation of feeling good, and as I I was in the Bahamas and the stock the, I was surrounded by scientists. Shinichiro Imai was there, who was a protege of of, of Garenti, 
And I was like, oh, wow, this guy's like the man. I'm not worthy. <laughs> um, so he had discovered that it, he was the guy that discovered, that did a lot of the discovery around how NAD was more important than SIR2 and 1, um, uh, things like resveratrol. And he's a totally brilliant dude. And I'm meeting him for the first time. And I'm getting attacked on all sides by scientists. But the guy says to me, he's like, Coke, and this German guy says to me, he was like, cocaine makes you feel good. Is that is does that mean it makes you healthy? And I said, <laughs> cocaine doesn't make you feel good for more than a few hours. NAD makes me feel good all the time. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, but there still isn't that scientific proof, right? And so we we Emi and I, and Emi is an NMN guy. So, but we had a really good conversation, just him and I talking about NMN and, and NAD. The, the the great thing about NMN is that there's there's um, they they do have a, a a good amount of research. They they do have a lot of financial backing. Um, guys like that are being backed with Sinclair. Um, the original research that had been done, they they did find um, a membrane tra- uh, transporter um, across the cell membrane with NMN. Okay. Um, and and there is one with NR as well. Okay. So there's so validity with NR, it, to all of them. It, it, with NR, supposedly the transporter is, is, it's more, it's, it's, it, there's more throughput on it, supposedly. Okay. Right. But NAD can't pass through for whatever reason. And it's like, I just go back to, you know, decades. NR has only been around since like 2013. Okay. Whereas NAD has been around much longer. Right. Um, NAD gets, NAD shows that it can it can go through um, through this this one transporter and astrocytes called Connexin forty three. Charlie, doc, Dr. Brenner, um, who's a who's a a very um, a very prestigious scientist who spoke at a conference that I put on, says says that um, you know it, it's just it's just not it's not something that can be upticked. The, the, the fact is, though, that there is this molecule called CD38, which is an extracellular molecule right. that, that, yeah. that relies on, on NAD in metabolism that's outside the cells. So it just it doesn't make any sense because it's, it's like this, this extreme. It's, and CD38 is, is very well connected to aging, too. It's not some it's, it's a very important mo, uh, it's a very important molecule. Now, right. the other issue and this came out in the Dublin NAD science conference was that when you strip out the microbiome in mice, the uptake of any of the B3 molecules is, is nil. Okay. Like zero, nothing gets uptake. Okay. Not only that, but what they're seeing in the metabolism is completely different. Like it's not being uptaked. NR is not like, it's not the same molecule as it goes into the microbiome and into the body, it's right. not the same thing. So it, everyone sort of left with, uh oh, what do we do now? Because a lot of the research that's supporting the NAD research, a lot of it is with NR. And so now, so there's there's a bit of a shift towards. And I and I told this to the scientists. I'm like, you guys are off. They're like, how are you off? I'm like you, you can't, you don't want to go through the gut. And it's like, what makes you think so? You, you, you're not doing any of the science. I'm like, I know from experience, like what, well, how everybody's you gut is messed up. I mean, you know, then you're relying on people's microbiome balance to, to deliver the molecule. That's not gonna, it's not yeah, gonna be consistent it, if nothing you know, else. I can, I, let me see if I can find the study and we can put that in the show notes. It's, sure. it's quite interesting. I don't remember exactly what, what's going on there, but Ryan Dellinger and Lenny Garenti at Elysium, they're going to do, they're doing some work with ALS right now. They're seeing um, a halting of, 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 of ALS with NR. Okay. Wow. And it's like, well, then you can ask him like prove that it goes across the blood brain barrier. You know, it's like. Well, they, it's doing, it's getting there it. somehow one way or another. And we can't say that people with ALS have optimized guts. So it's got to be getting there somehow. It, it, it's just important to to realize if you're getting the result, that's probably the most important thing. Sure. You know, and if you're halting ALS, then 
that's he's gonna nobody that's can pretty, argue. that's the most important thing like no how is it how is it doing what it's doing you know well we'll so that, figure it out what what we see like science wise is is pretty is is you see some pretty strong science with nr in terms of number of journals Num- like the amount of money that's going into it is pretty sizable right in terms and then it goes nmn and then it goes nad okay in terms of like pr- practice in medicine it, it's it's easily nad in terms of like different countries that have used it, Russia, South Africa, Mexico, um, so many decades that it's gone back and it had been um, generally recognized as, as a, as a safe uh, uh, food in, in the United States for, for decades. This so NAD, since the inception yeah. of grass. NAD. Uh, yeah. Okay. NAD, yeah. Interesting. So there really isn't a huge sort of, you, you, you can, you never say never about the, the adverse reactions you know, as I was pointing out earlier with phloxes and Lyme's patients, when you take niacin, if you take too much of it, you you just want to vomit. It's right. kind of the same thing. Like nature tells you, you've had enough, and <laughs> you, it's time to not do any more. Okay, um, right. That's one of the big debates: is right. which one's which better? One? And 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 I'm giving you. I'm giving you my answer and then I'm giving you also the other arguments right. as well. Well, so maybe the, the idea is just to take them all, just do some NR and NMN and NAD and not in mega doses and, and, and hedge your bets. One yeah. other thing I wanted to point out, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, go ahead. You. Um, I'm okay. doing it again. Um, I'm, I'm interrupting people. I'm going to interrupt you back. It's okay. You go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> but um, people talk about raising NAD levels, but why do you raise the NAD level? You raise the NAD level so you can see, you get PARPS activity and so that you get sirtuin activity, okay? Yep. And so PARPS activity is correcting correcting the, the DNA damage. Um, and it's, sometimes if it's not there, that means your DNA is pretty good. You know, it could mean that that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Sirtuin a- a- activity, number of mitochondria, there's other things that we can look at besides raising NAD levels. Niacin can very much raise NAD levels, but I think what they'll see from the way that it gets utilized is there's not enough of these other sort of ancillary molecules there. Uh, it's something having to do with at the adenine part of the molecule and the NAD not being there that it, it somehow blunts the, 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 the sirtuin response. And that's something that NR uh, lacks that NA, NAD and NMN don't don't lack. You okay, know? all right. So, but as I said, like the nicotine acid is like is like the you know the stepchild, you know, the redheaded stepchild. I'm a redhead, so I can say that. <laughs> but it's the the redheaded stepchild of B3, and I mean, it's there's you know some of the there's some reports, there's some anecdotal reports, there's some information out there on COVID about how it's shortening. Um. The sick time. Same thing with nicotinamide riboside too. NR. And I've talked to people doing NMN and they're seeing they're saying the same thing. And then and I've even heard some, about some people doing NAD for for COVID as well. Yeah. And so it's super exciting to see. Um, you know, I, I think there that there's one thing that can't that 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 I always go to like I, I always think of myself sort of I'm all I'm always a little bit smug. When I, even when I'm around some of these some of these people that can get a Nobel Prize, at least you know every couple of years if I see them, and that is that the way that I felt, you know, like Maya Angelou's quote, you know, they, they forget you can forget what they did to you, they forget what you know they said about you, but they never make, forget how people never forget how about how you made them feel. Yeah, like, and it, the way that NAD made me feel is something that I. I take with me to my grave. Right. And the, my whole perception's changing. And yeah, it's just, it's like. Well, you're, you're the walking, talking testimonial to all the work that they're doing mm-hmm. to some degree. You know, I mean, you've lived it and it's, and it's an interesting perspective, right? Because it gives you the firsthand experience that, that scientists, they don't necessarily have that insight. I mean, the mice can't talk to them. The, like, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it would, it, I'm sure it's quite fascinating for them to have you there 
to share your experience to say, well, yeah, I know what the science says, but here's what happened to me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, and then for them to basically go around using their research to try and understand what that's all about. So the last question I'm going to ask you guys, and let's see if we can keep this under three minutes, because I'm pretty sure we're over an hour and a quarter at this point. Are there any negative feedback loop issues with people supplementing with NAD? So this is a question that came out of my group. I mean, I personally, like on a gut level, I would say not because, I mean, if I think of NAD supplementation, could it be like it's just upgrading all your systems so that then the cell becomes better able at producing its own NAD again? Like it may have lost the ability you know, the mitochondria got sick, they're dysfunctional, they're not producing NAD, you give it kind of this blast of NAD over however much time, it restores itself, the DNA gets repaired, the mitochondria get repaired, and all of a sudden, you, you reestablish the body's ability to make its own NAD. But the question was, and it's a fair one, have you seen or do you know of any negative feedback loop issues where when people take it for too long or use any of these precursors where all of a sudden the body's going to stop doing its own thing. With NAD IV supplementation, and um, my experience is limited to 14 years now. Um, I have seen, seen people that I knew in my first year of delivery that still are utilizing NAD supplementation long-term. They're either going for um, infusions um, that are... Um, that are keeping their NAD levels up due to stressors in their life. So that's a factor that we always have to consider. Um, some patient, I mean, some patients or consumers um, should always take NAD because of the imbalance that they have or the um, the um, lack of homeostasis within the body, right. should so I say. Have, so they haven't been able to resolve the root cause of their need for the NAD in the first place. Exactly. Right. Um yeah. Those those individuals, um, I would say, um, from if it were me, um, I would continue to supplement. There's a there's a need for it. We've not seen any adverse response or side effects long term. The only indication that I would caution someone, they had. Um, a previous bout of certain types of cancers um, that are fed, I mean, that utilize NAD in, um, or, or that actually grow from a presence of NAD. Okay. Um, it's not actually the presence of NAD alone. There's some other factors with it. Um, I can put that in the notes if anybody is interested, specifically um, glioblastoma. Um, we know that um, with an abundance of NAD um, available, it will it will cause the tumor to grow some more or the tumors. Okay. So that, w- that would be my only, um, you know, that would be my only con- either contraindication or do not use if, you know. Okay. These are factors. Great. How about you, Tom? Yeah, I think I think the cancer thing's an interesting question. I talked to Joe Bauer, he's at the University of Pennsylvania, like like four years ago, and I asked him that question. You know, and I've asked that question to my naturopath's medical doctor, he's amazing in San Diego. She's talking about the it, it's sort of a wash. Both of them say sort of like what NAD does for cancer is it corrects the the DNA damage of cancers. It, it cancers often re, might often rely on that on on using NAD to correct DNA damage, whereas uh, regular cells have uh, more than one way of doing that. Okay, and so there might be sort of you know extra help to the cancer, but there's also in potential other other things like increased immunity too. So you know it's still rather um, uh, unknown as to right. what that is the the science is pointing towards unknown as far as like what NAD can do for cancer prevention because it's correcting DNA damage that's something that's also really really quite exciting it's just the, the fact that it could be cancer preventative you know so what what happens when you have the cancer it, it's still it's still very much um it's still very much an interesting question um and, um, you know, also, you know, it's, this is a part of growth too. So pregnancy, you know, I mean, like I'd be questioning that too. I would also put that in like 
the like an unknown c- category, you know, as well. Okay. Um, as far as like, there is a history of using vitamin B3 with niacin, especially with Hoffer doing a lot of um, heavy dose niacin. Um, he saw that as an antidote for schizophrenia. And as a psychedelic researcher, he thought of schizophrenia as a endogenous psychedelic. And so for him, it was that vitamin B3 was this, was this way of metabolizing the psychedelics in, inside the brain. And he was, so, I mean, he even talked about using it. If someone was having a bad trip, you could just give them a little bit of niacin and, you know, clear it up. That's um, very true. Okay. We've seen, yeah. I've seen that clinically, um, bringing somebody out of a drunken stupor, if you give them an IV. I, and I've, I've done that as well. So, I mean, I've, we've spent a lot of time working on this, this sort of stuff. But what I would say is that, you, you know, one of the other things that gets brought up is when you, when you're cycling through the, 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 the NAD, that there's a, a methyl catabolite. So it, it takes a methyl groups out of the cell. But it's more so with the niacin than with the NAD. So than it is with the NAD, and that's been going on for decades. And we're talking about high doses of niacin, grams and grams. Some people doing twenty grams. No, nope. I don't know how you can do twenty I grams. Even tolerate that. It, some people actually they they need to have that. Um, this is you can read a lot. Of, Hoffer, Abraham Hoffer wrote thirty six books, co authored you know fifty sixty books. Um, so he, that you can go research that if you want, Yeah. but, but I mean, you, there's much more demethylation that goes on with, with the niacin and it works really. And a lot of like naturopaths, they see some people having adverse reactions to methyl B12 or, you know, methyl folate where they they have this, you know, about this with the just super anxiety, they can't sleep and it's all because they took too much of a vitamin or they had an injected or the wrong um, form of a vitamin. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what do they do? They give them niacin because it will take the methyl group out okay. um, from the over methylation. So, Interesting. you know, there's, so there's, that's certainly to, something that should be looked add, at, but, but there's a history there's simultaneously, there's a history of, um, you know, people um, with, with that, with niacin. So using, uh, you know, DMG, B- betaine, you know, right. taking, taking, taking methyl related vitamins. Um, if that's something that you can handle, um, that's something that I certainly look at it personally. That's something that nat- naturopathic doctors look at, um, you know, uh, functional medicine doctors will look at m- methylation, um, uh, methylation, um, levels of methylation, like the Genova diagnostics, nutri eval has a, has methylation yeah. testing. And I, I would highly recommend yourself. utilizing, um, methylated products alongside of NAD. If you are an under methylator, cause it, okay. it, it is one of those things that are going to, um, you know, rob methyl groups. Right. Perfect. Just not like niacin, which is much just not more. like niacin. Yeah, totally. Okay. Amazing. Well, I think that we will leave it at that. We'll leave the rest of the questions for another day, or maybe we'll add them to to the show notes. But I want to thank you both very much tonight for sharing your vision, sharing your stories, and sharing your wisdom on NAD and NR and NMN. And I think that what you're doing is so incredibly inspiring. Like, I think that, you know, all this work towards helping people, you know, like everybody's in business to make a living in the whole nine yards, but this vision that you have of bringing this incredible therapy to the people who need it the most, who are not always the people who have the means to access it, I think is pretty amazing. So uh, we'll definitely include all the links in the show notes and, um, and we'll invite people who are able to, to visit Longevity Collective so that they can try your products as well, because I think that that would be amazing. I mean, I am like we, we talked about earlier. I'm not always the best example with this stuff. I happen to have an, um, an unfortunate reaction to the patch. It happens in some people, but I can't say I've ever been more disappointed that I couldn't use a product, but you know, my husband will be the happy recipient of my cast. Yeah, absolutely. And we want to hear his response, you know, for sure. So do you guys, so what's the best way for people to access your, 
like you, I know you have a great website. So what's the website people should use to find Longevity Collective and the Longevity on Underground to find the movie, like to find all that stuff? What's the best yeah. way for people to? Um, so Longevity Collective is just www.longevitycollective.com. There, there's the info um, link. Um, you can reach out to me there. I'm usually the one that is processing orders and on the phone with everybody. So I'm the butcher, baker, candlestick maker of the Longevity Collective. You know, um, you're a very busy person, yes. <laughs> um, and then um, we have the nonprofit, which is um, CRAB, Center for Research on Addiction and Brain Health, which is also also known as Longevity Underground. And the website is longevityunderground.org. There you can go to find out more about um, the projects that we'll be doing and also um, look at some of the papers that our interns have, um, have published and um, find out more about um, treatments that may be synergistic to NAD and then also alternative treatments that we're looking at for brain health and um, and addiction and also longevity. Um, and then lastly, you can reach out to both Tom and myself um, on, I, and we both have social media website, I mean, social media um, um, links. Uh, links, thank you. We're, we're pretty social people. Tom calls himself an introvert, but he's really an introverted extrovert once you get him talking. <laughs> okay. All right. um, so we'll put those yeah. in the show notes as well. Totally. Okay. Yeah. And then um, nadtest.org is, um, is or .com. nadtest.com is Longevity Diagnostic Research, which is the testing company, if someone would want to find out more about that. Amazing. Well, thank you again, both. So very, very much. This has been, thank you for having us here. Uh, yeah. And this has been great. So best of luck with everything. And I'm sure that we'll talk again. Maybe we'll talk when you get the results of the test back and you get it up. Yeah, absolutely. And we hope to see you in January. I think you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of the biohacking superhuman performance podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to leave us a five-star review on iTunes because that's what helps us to be heard and to be seen. If you'd like to connect with me directly or if you'd like to leave any comments or if you have any questions about this episode, please reach out to me directly through my website, mattnidham.com. And of course, if you're not already a member of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Community on Facebook, that's where you'll find me every day. It's a short application. Just answer a couple of questions and you're in and interfacing with other amazing biohackers. Thanks again. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode.